Good morning, everyone. My name is Gemma Tognini. I'm not sure if you can see me on screen. This is the joy of live webinars. I am uh, delighted to be your host today for Boot the Blues. Uh, the second year we're bringing this event to you and we're so thrilled that you can join us on behalf of Steel Blue and Beyond Blue. We are wanting to continue the conversation around mental health and uh, particularly in the trades and associated industries. Before we go on, uh, on behalf of everyone participating today, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are hosting this webinar all around Australia today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. In just a few minutes, um, seconds actually, I'm not going to do this to you for minutes, in just a few seconds I'm going to uh, kick it off with uh, Dr Grant Blaschke from Beyond Blue. But before I do, I just again want to welcome you to uh, this seminar today and just really encourage you to dive in, sit back, listen, take notes. Uh, we've got a fantastic panel, each of whom is going to bring some really meaningful, real world um, experience to the table that you will be able to relate to. Uh, Dr. Grant Blaschke, as I mentioned, Ross Fitzgerald is one of the founding directors of Steel Blue, Kevin Maloney from Zinfra, Brad McEwen, a Beyond Blue ambassador, and Pranola Guri, who will talk a lot about the physical connection to our mental health. So that's just a teaser for you. Let me get straight into it by passing you over to the very capable hands of Dr. Grant Blaschke, who is the lead clinical advisor for Beyond Blue, who's going to take us through the findings of this year's study. And uh, believe me, it comes up with some really, actually some really encouraging news. So Grant, over to you. Gemma, and thanks for your introduction. And big thank you to Steel Blue, who are really leading the sector in the way they have been partnering with Beyond Blue. And, uh, you know, we couldn't do all the, the work that we do without their, their great support. Um, so I'll be talking today uh, a little bit about the survey and what are some of the mental health issues for tradies, but also some really practical things that you can do. If you're listening and you've been having a bit of a stormy time or one of your mates has been, hopefully today might just be that that little nudge that makes you think I'm going to put up my hand and get a bit of help if I need it. So, so let's go to the next slide. And it's a pretty busy slide, so I'm not going to sort of uh, run through all the numbers there, but there's a, a couple of messages really that I, that I want you to take away from this. The first is that mental health issues are really common and you don't need statistics to tell you that. If you think about your friendship group, your family, you'll definitely know people or yourself who are having some sort of mental health issue or have had some sort of issue. It's really, really common in the community. And we know that about half of people at some time in their life have some mental health issues. Uh, the next thing that I, uh, this really tells us is that people are under a lot of stress, particularly a lot of financial stress at the moment, or we've been seeing that with cost of living, but also there's quite a lot of people who are a bit lonely and socially isolated. You know, the way I think about it as, as a GP is a lot of people sort of got off the train during the pandemic and then a whole lot of people haven't got back on it. They're still living pretty small lives and a bit isolated. But some really good news from the survey is that, you know, about two thirds of people are already taking action on their mental health. And the way I think about that is it's all about prevention, right? If you're, you don't wait till your car breaks down, you get it serviced. And, and that's the way we want people to think about mental health. Don't wait till you're really in a mess, you know, get in early, keep up your exercise, make sure you're carving out enough time in your week to do some of the things you enjoy, catching up with good friends and family and be kind to yourself. You know, there's a lot going on at the moment. Next slide, please. So there's a couple of trends that have been happening. You know, everyone's noticing the cost of living at the moment. And, you know, that's having an impact on families, which, are, you know, it's a bit of a pressure cooker for people. We know the national debt hotline that 
is actually a great service. If you're having financial issues at the moment, they're a great mob to give a call and have a chat. It's a free service. But I think for trade, he says that extra stresses at the moment of supply chain pressures and customer demands and, you know, the physical work. And, and we're going to talk a bit more about that. Keep in mind, you know, Beyond Blue is always there. It's free service. You can ring up. You can do the web chat if you're a bit more of a typer. Um, you can go to our website. And so there's great services there. Next slide. And uh, we looked at the survey of about 900 tradies, and we really appreciate that people took the time to fill it out because they've got a lot on. And again, I'm not going to go through all the stats, but I just wanted to make a couple of big points there. No surprise, uh, you know, that mental health issues are pretty common. We knew that. There's quite a relationship between physical injury. And as a GP, I see a lot of young guys who've injured themselves at work, and there's the physical recovery, but it's a bit of a mental challenge too. And you really got to pace yourself and look after your mental health if you've done an injury. And, and of course, getting back to work is one of the best things for your mental health, just to get back into your routine as well. We also found that about one in three people weren't sure how to get help. So hopefully after this webinar, none of you fall into that category and you, there's a whole lot of phone numbers and support out there that you're going to hear about. Next slide, please. One of the other bits of good news is stigma or sort of embarrassment about talking about mental health. That seems to be dropping a bit. So a lot of people in the community feel like, I've got a mental health issue. I need to just harden up and solve it, solve it myself, you know, and that approach often doesn't work too well. And as a GP, you see people getting more and more in a rut, relationship problems or start drinking or all sorts of secondary problems. So I'm really pleased to see that there's much more comfort talking about mental health. 40% of people had spoken to a family, friend or a, um, a family or friend. 60% of people said they were comfortable seeking professional help. And 30% that compared to 12 months ago, they've noticed that there's an increase in workmates talking about their mental health. So these are all really good signs. I even noticed there's a bit of a generational issue as well. I've got adult sons in the workforce and they all seem a bit more relaxed talking about mental health and how they're managing. Seems to be much more of a, a topic that they're comfortable talking about. Next slide. There were some quotes um, from people who have put up their hand, and, and you can have a bit of a look at those, but, but I think the message is get help early. There's lots of people where they were having a hard time. They gave Beyond Blue a call or they went along to their GP, got the ball rolling, and they didn't regret it. They got onto things earlier, and that's what we're really encouraging you to do. Next slide. Now, for many of you, you know, one, I often get asked, what do I do if I'm worried about a friend? And it's a bit of a balancing act, isn't it? Because you don't want to patronise them and you don't want to be intrusive, but you know, might notice that a work colleague or a mate is really not themselves. And there are signs, you know, red flags, they're missing work or performance has gone off or they're getting into a lot of conflict with people, not answering their phone. All these sort of things are little warning signs. So a couple of tips on how to start the conversation. Pick a good time and place, private. For a lot of fellas, just doing something for, uh, together, you know, you might be going for a drive or a walk or a kick of the footy and you're having a chat um, rather than sort of being in their face. So a sort of a parallel discussion sometimes good. Remember, you don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to solve it. You can start. A good starter is something like, oh, I've noticed you seem to be coming in late a lot or I've noticed you seem to be, you know, pretty short with everyone at the moment. How are things going? So and then... The hardest bit of it all is not to jump in with your own answers and just to listen because we're all really tempted to go, oh, when I had this hard time, I did this, or what you should do is X, Y, Z. But if you can just sit back and listen, people really appreciate it. Some people will say, hey, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I'm all good. No problem, mate. 
And that's okay too, because they know you're interested and they might come back to you later. And you might just really change someone's life by opening that door of discussion with them. So that's really important. Next slide. Now, one of my fellow panellists, Brad McEwen, who you're going to hear from, is looking pretty smart in his hard hat with his uh, colleagues here. I'm sure he can tell us a bit about that photo when we get to the panel. And we, if we go to the next slide, just a reminder, there's so much help out there. You can always ring Beyond Blue, said and go on the chat. There, uh, Black Dog's got some good resources. Headgear's a really good um, uh, program that you can have a look at. Don't forget, in Australia, and this is really important for people, especially who haven't been in Australia very long, the GPs are a very important part of our mental health workforce. So you can book in with a GP, a thing called a GP mental health treatment plan, and the GP will go through everything with you. And once you've done that, it trigger, you get access to Medicare subsidised appointments with a psychologist so you know if you're really in stormy times that can be a great option plus you often if you're seeing a gp about a physical injury as well you can do all that together next slide last one from me just want to make the point that it's about individuals but it is about workplaces and there are a lot of mentally healthy workplaces and and it's great to see steel blue taking the leadership um, but we know that workplaces that invest in talking about mental health issues, great for everyone. You know, people know that if they've got an issue, they can get help. But also it's good for the bottom line of those businesses as well. So lots we can do to make our workplaces a, a more mentally healthy place. We could talk about that maybe a bit in the panel. But enough from me. I would love to hear from our very exciting panel. And so I'm going to hand back over to Gemma. She loves me. That was fantastic, Grant. There's a lot to, to chew on there. And while we just wait for the rest of the panel to, to come on board and we can introduce them properly, what's your... Um, What's your take in terms of the biggest difference from this year to last year? Yeah, I, I think that a few things have happened. I mean, the big thing was there were a lot of people in the community who honestly didn't know what you were talking about when you're talking yeah. about health issues. They'd never been through it. They didn't really know what it was. But even the most stoic of people, you know, the toughest people in the world, they did it pretty hard during the pandemic and their worlds got turned upside down. And, and I think it did open up the conversation a lot. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned, I think there's a generational issue. We're seeing some young guys up, coming up. You know, you see some of these young footy players and, you know, public celebrities talking about mental health so much more comfortably now. So I think we are seeing a shift and that's a great thing. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think we've got everybody on deck. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce everybody to our viewers and to, to people who might be watching this later because I know... Last year, a lot of people preferred to watch the webinar and engage with the webinar after it had gone live, which is brilliant. We want you to do that. Share it with your mates. Watch it over again. We want you to get as much value as you can. So, well, I feel like this is the Brady Bunch. Looks pretty good, huh? <laughs> a big welcome to Ross Fitzgerald from from Steel Blue. Ross is one of the founding directors of Steel Blue. And again, Grant already acknowledged the leading role that Steel Blue plays in just in de destigmatizing this conversation in the workforce. It's so important. And this this event wouldn't be happening without the support of Steel the Steel Blue team. So we, we thank you and we welcome you, Ross. Kevin Maloney. Kevin is the General Manager of Power Services North from Zinfra. Uh, I know Kevin in my consulting life and I'm so pleased that he got to join us. He's going to share a bunch of really, really important and insightful real world experience from being in the field with, with a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of blokes out in the middle of nowhere a lot of the time. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks, Jim. Brad McEwen, g'day, Brad. Very much. I'm sort of like fighting you for the brightest on screen, but I think you've pipped me at the post. Yes. How are you, Brad? Thanks, Gemma. Look, too, it's not, this isn't just token, as you'll hear me explain. This is what I wear no. once yeah. a fortnight. And you know what? This is actually a uniform 
yeah, in my right. entire life that I'm most proud of because it represents yeah. the connection that I have with uh, my hometown and the people there. Well, for those of you who haven't met Brad, and we'll hear from him in just a second, Brad is a Beyond Blue ambassador and uh, a former, like me, a former TV person, but Brad was a former sports presenter who has been a very powerful and influential mental health advocate over the years, and we'll hear from him in just a second. Um, I would like to also welcome now Pranola. Pranola Guri, pardon me, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. I've got a few notes in front of me here. Pranola is a 26-year veteran physiotherapist and a member of this Australian Physiotherapy Association Mental Health Committee. Um, Pranola is a specialist in the area of mind-body connection when it comes to mental health and being healthy in the workplace. Um, she's currently working as an injury management specialist for Transdev John Holland, and she's a partner in the occupational rehab provider, iPrana Health Consulting. So welcome to you, Pranola. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jenna. And um, Ross, can I start with you, please? May I ask, um, what is the difference? We, we were sort of talking offline the other day, and I guess we, we were all sort of sharing the view that there's been progress, and it's wonderful to acknowledge that there's been progress, and we were actually able to have a conversation rather from being a place of, you know, being sort of in crisis, but a place of going, look, we've actually made some progress. You know, in the business, as the employer, what are you seeing, um, you know, signs of, signs of improvement, signs of change that you're seeing now that you might not have seen three or four years ago? Yeah, I think as, um, as an employer, um, we can play a pretty big part in uh, trying to help um, our staff. And try. I think um, you know, Grant said that hit the nail on the head when he talked about prevention. So I suppose one of the things that we want to try and do is make it a great working environment. So <clears throat> a bit of a few numbers, it's about 25% of our whole week, including weekends, that we actually spend at work, which is probably more than we spend with our partner. And uh, so from my point of view that, you know, we, we need to have that, that engagement and um, just one of the things that, that we've done and we do, we do two toolbox sessions and uh, et cetera. But there's one thing that we do with our customer service team, which we're doing for some time now, is, is actually have what we call a chin wag session. And um, right. it, it really talks, of, we, all we do is uh, we, we tell a little bit about you know, how we're going as far as the business is going, the sales, and it's our customer service. Uh, so they're, they're heavily involved in uh, in that part of our business. And uh, the, 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 uh, it goes for about anywhere between 10 and 30 minutes at 8 mm. o'clock on Monday morning. And from my point of view, we're trying to, um, you know, it's not just about the work environment, it's also they can tell us what they did on the weekend. So we're trying to create that really great working environment um, when they're yep. here, and they yep. uh, uh, create a really good uh, an enjoyment when, when they're at Steel Blue, and um, it's, it's worked really well. And uh, you know, there's a bit of banter. Last weekend, we had one of our girls uh, have a hen's night, there's a bit of uh, information <laughs> tonight, a few photos. But it, it, I, I suppose the bottom line is we want our staff to wake up in the morning and look forward to going to work. They might have yep. a few off the field issues going sure. on. But if, if we can help with their work environment, yeah. I really believe that can help their overall. If they've got a few uh, mental issues, totally. going on, um, if we can make it a really good environment at Steel Blue, that's going to help their, their off the field issues. So that's what we try and do across the board, and yeah. we try and make sure they really enjoy their experience at Steel Blue every day. That's so important. And that actually dovetails perfectly into to what Kevin was sharing with us all on Monday when we had our preliminary chat chat. So Kevin, do you just want to um, give a very brief overview for those who are watching today um, about the team that you lead and, and the sort of the various challenges and some of the things that Zinfra is doing and some of the things that you've seen that have really worked well in your, particularly in your FIFO cohort? Yeah, Gemma, um, we, we probably have a unique type workforce where they work a 10-4 roster. So they basically leave on a Tuesday and come back on the Thursday the following week and they're together that whole time. Uh, so they spend more time with their workmates than they do with their families. Right. Um, so there's a whole lot of challenges out there and um, a whole lot of risks. So, and they don't work in a controlled environment per se where there's a fence around it and there's a safety person. They work on the assets right across the country, um, you know, in different areas, floods, heat waves, whatever. Um, so there's a whole lot of challenges there. What we've found is that we put a whole lot of effort into safety as a company, 
and we probably haven't put as much into health. So we're starting to look at the health side of it and try to look after the guys. Now, some of the, you know, we, we've engaged, we've had Thrive and, and things like that in the business as a health and wellbeing um, uh, access, but we've, we've engaged with people like uh, Machen Energy and done mm-hmm. a whole lot of um, you know, general acceptance training right across the whole business and done a whole lot of connected training so that because they're the guys who see them every day they'll know when they get up in the morning if someone's not on point or there's something wrong or they yeah. got a call during the night my child's sick or something you know yeah. um, things like that that go on but in addition to that what we've found is that we're now taking that next step to look at um, the health side of um, um, some of the stresses and anxieties and things like that so we're rolling out with nutrition australia you know how to how to how to stay healthy while you're away from home how to choose you know good healthy food which everybody knows has a good link into mental health uh etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's that mind mind body connection um you know and so we're taking responsibility for the risks of the type of employment that we give and and helping them so we also have you know corporate me- gym memberships we also have um you know uh, annual medicals we're looking at putting in and we've engaged a guy out of cq university to look at fatigue management because all these right. things link these right things. through to you know mental health which is linked through yeah. to incidents and accidents etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's a holistic approach rather than just that safety approach so because that's the thing isn't it i think that's where we, we, we've all sort of acknowledged you know um in our own lives and as sort of you know consumers of news in this space it's not one single thing and Pranola, i'll just come to you quickly on that if i can because uh, a full confession if i don't eat well my whole sort of equilibrium goes off the charts like i literally can connect if i eat crappy food my my sense of just sense of feeling okay tends to diminish which is not so great when i want to spend the weekend on the couch eating chips but that's the reality right so what are you seeing in your in your area of work Pranola? yeah absolutely it's so interesting kevin you mentioned that because just on the news this morning there's um an american fast food outlet that has a plan to have 200 um stores in australia by 2032. so i go look that's just going to be more fast food outlet choice for us. But of course, they've got a strategy and it's coming to Australia. Um, in I, I love the feedback from both Kevin and Ross. And in my area of work in, you know, working with an employer to manage health and well-being, this is, 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 this is exactly what we want to see. So where we've got the senior leaders embracing health and well-being, this is when you see change. You could bring in subject matter experts like the Occupational Health Group, um, by the APA has the best minds on the globe when it comes to physiotherapy. But if you don't have the change that's being implemented from the top, from the leaders, those experts are not really going to do much good. Mm -hmm. So this is excellent. I just love hearing your feedback. It's grassroots, isn't it? And Brad, I want to I want to come to you here. Um, those of us who know Brad know a bit about his story, but there's probably uh, maybe two or three people, Brad, who 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 um, who maybe don't. So if you if you would be able to share a bit of your story, how you became um, a Beyond Blue ambassador, and just a little bit about the kind of work that you do, because I know the the key theme here is connection. Like Kevin said just before, you know the people who wake up in the donga with their mates and go, he's off today, something's happened, right? Mm -hmm. Giving them the permission to speak and the tools to do it, what Ross said about creating an environment at work where people can come to work and maybe tap someone on the shoulder and go, I'm just not coping. That's the prevention part that you are so deeply involved in. Do you want to take us through it? Yeah, uh, that'll be my pleasure, uh, Gemma. Um, I was a sports journalist for... 25 years and a few years ago i just found it wasn't really um i'd lost my passion and all the way through i'd had a heavy focus on mental health i've been a beyond the investor before gosh it's about 13 years now um at, when i was a teenager we lost two family members uh, brother and father to suicide now as mum says that's not something you ever get over you just get on with life because you don't have any other choice but when beyond blue approached me about being an ambassador and then i approached uh, my mum and sister uh, to ask them if it's okay that we talk about it because it's not yeah. just my story it's our story yeah so what i do now is 
I go out and I talk. I talk about me. I talk about my stuff. I talk about uh, taking medication for anxiety. Yeah. And the reason you see me in the high vis, and um, I work with corporate sporting groups, so they've still got that love of sport. But my hometown of Rochester, as many people will be aware, last year was flooded. Now, Ward Brothers, these fellas here, and I'm giving them a plug for no other reason than I love them and I love what they do. They care about their people. So in a small town like Rochester, every time there's a disaster, their people stop what they're doing and they go in. They might have a team of 50. Mm -hmm. They clean up everyone's house. The floods were so disastrous last year. Most of their people, their workers had their homes flooded and they were going into homes and seeing some traumatic stuff that they'd never seen before. So we, I had a discussion, you know, they were uh, the, the brothers who uh, own the business are friends and and we came up with an idea where once a fortnight I go I go in with them and I get on the tools and I get literally that they're, they're putting pipes in for Golden Murray water and everything else. I literally get in the trenches with them because whilst I, I knew some of them previously, Jim, I didn't I didn't know all of them. And you spoke about connection. For me, yeah. the best way to connect is to be in there with them. They yeah. get to know me. Yeah. So after about two months of getting to know me, those that didn't know me, the photo you saw there, that was a couple of Fridays mm -hmm. ago, we had a barbecue. Um, I gave a presentation. I made a point of uh, uh, doing one particular activity around resilience. Some people might know about this one, Grant, you might know it, where I'm comparing squeezing a tennis ball to squeezing a tomato. Now, of course, yeah, Jake, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake yeah. squeezes the tomato and it goes everywhere and everyone's laughing and everyone's having fun. Yeah. And that's my whole point is mm -hmm. it's to quote Sabina Reid, an article in uh, The Age uh, in Melbourne a few years ago, it's got to be a little bit fun or how else is there anyone going to look forward to it? So I use humour and I've got my steel blue, fancy new blue, beyond blue, blue <laughs> conversation starter. Everyone talks about it and they're like, yeah. oh, where did you get those? I go, well, yeah. funny you ask. Yeah, yeah. And the thing that I, the thing that I'm really passionate about, and this is being, being a country boy and having that connection, I, I expect, you know, if there's a crane driver on a uh, um, on a site and he doesn't come in and we really need a crane driver, well, Joe Bloggs doesn't go, I'll do it. In the same way that if you rip your arm off, you don't go, I'll fix it. As Grant touched on, you're not, we're not mental health experts. We actually go and see professionals. And no. if I can use an analogy going back to my days covering sport, imagine in whatever footy code, it might be rugby union, rugby league, Aussie rules, doesn't matter. Imagine if they said, right, we've got this idea. You're going to earn a whole lot more money, but there's a catch. Okay, what's the catch? I'd love to have more money. Um, well, there'll be no, you'll get no breaks, no quarter time, no half time. There'll be no one on the bench. Now, we know it doesn't matter what footy code it is. It doesn't matter what sport it is. That'll never happen because yeah. all of the health professionals and the player managers will say, and the parents will say, hang on, the human body is not physically capable to, to, with, to deal with that load. And I say, exactly. And you know what? Exactly. When it comes to mental health, yeah. there are organisations that expect people to work 20 hours every day because that's just the culture. And I say, well, just because that's the way it is mm. doesn't mean it's right. So oh. as you know, Ross touched on, when he has his uh, chin wag, I, I remind the fellas and management at Ward Brothers that the downtime, the smoko, the conversation, the laughter, the barbecues, the hugs, they're, they're the most important part of the day. It's so You just bring up something so important because I know, like, I'm in business. I've been in business for myself for 20 years, and that's not an easy road to play. I can give you the tip. But before that, I was in TV news for 10 years, and as a general news reporter, you cover all manner of trauma frankly I felt like for I felt like for a decade I was the sponge for every traumatic event that happened in Western Australia and ultimately that was one of the reasons why I choose to chose to exit that industry but coming back to what you've just said to what Kevin touched on to what Ross touched on just about that um like if I think about the early times in my career if you were struggling you'd never say so 
I, re I remember having a gun pulled on me on a job one day and 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 the person it was a total schmozzle of an like no one was to blame there was a very very distraught person who mistook us for someone that we weren't pulled a gun on us my cameraman was an absolute superstar but we just went back to work <laughs> We just went back to work and no one said, okay, you're having a day off, you're debriefing, are you okay? We just went back to work. I think we might have got sent to another job that day. So we've changed, thank goodness, thank goodness. And Kevin, can I just ask you about your guys on the workforce? Because you did you did talk the other day in the briefing about the other external factors. So it's not just like, um, for, you know, the pressure of FIFO, which is being away from your kids and your wife and feeling all of those vulnerabilities, but it's the whole... I'm on my, I might have 5G and I might be on sports bed all day or I might be, you know, all of those sorts of external pressures. Those are things that employers, particularly of workforces who are remote for swings, have to have a, a strategy around dealing with. I mean, you obviously can't control every moment of every day, but what sorts of things are you guys looking at and, and are you finding an issue? Yeah, we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing some emerging um, issues that, potentially at the root cause of some of the anxiety and mental stress. Um, and I mean, social media itself is is, is uh, good if you want to keep up with what's going on in the world, but it can also be very, very bad because it's, it's mm -hmm. in your pocket 24 seven if you want it to be. What we're seeing is there's some emerging uh, things where, you know, um, guys are getting into gambling. And if you watch any sport, and Brad would know this, is that any sport, there's gonna be 50 ads during a game for sports bet or this bet or that bet or whatever so you know it's 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 uh, promoting um, betting and they put a little rider at the end uh, you're going to lose well you know it's, it's that's the fine print but it, it's promoting and kids really young kids at 16 17 are getting into into gambling you know and i said the other day in my day if i wanted to gamble i'd, I'd go to the tab or the, or the track on the weekend and bet on a horse these days you can sit down at lunchtime and play slots if you want it yeah you know, right. um and and you know we've had um wives ring up and say you know my husband come home from work and he went by the, you've got no money left out of his pay and things like that so that brings all sorts of stresses on and goes on and on and on and that that can be a root cause to bring on you know anxiety and then you know how am i going to do this i shouldn't have done that they feel guilty a whole lot of things so you know we've run some programs um through through mates um around gambling Right. Uh, and things like that. So, but that, that's what we're seeing as one of the emerging things that we need to address and, and discuss that we didn't see 10 years ago. Um, but it, it's just starting, you know, it, it's just emerging now, but it is a definite issue with, with, with a lot of people. Yeah. Grant, do you have any views on, on that kind of stuff? Because that's really a whole new ball game for employers, isn't it? It's, it's really a fantastic conversation. And, and I think, you know, it's quite a, it's not a superficial chat. I can hear that everyone's really thinking about it. How do we actually deal with the root causes? And I love this preventive approach. And just to some of, you know, Kevin and Ross's points, when you think about how much effort we put into, you know, physical safety in the workplace now and backs and knees and lifting and all that, but then you look at how many people go off sick on stress leave and mental health issues, you know, it's so important that we're putting in all that preventive effort in that regard as well. It completely makes sense. And and to the point about, you know, emerging problems, only about 50% of people with mental health problems go and get any professional help. And that's a real shame yeah, because yeah. we know all these studies and Beyond Blue's got a couple of, you know, big reviews on their website, what works for depression, what works for anxiety, looks yeah. at all scientific studies. We've got lots of things that work really well, but half people don't get any professional help. So what happens? Their lives spin out of control often. They get into what we call very maladaptive things. So you start gambling or you're getting drunk because you can't sleep and then you, you, know, you feel worse in the morning. So you start getting stuck into the alcohol. Um, I agree. The we, we've only scratched the surface on social media, which and you know this permanent online presence, which can be really damaging it's for insidious, people. It's right. It's insidious. It's my job to be across that stuff, and and I and I genuinely mean that. Like when people say social media is accessible, it really, really is. I I've taken 
you know, pr proactive, aggressive, what I call aggressive strategy. I just delete it from my phone over the weekends. During the week, it's genuinely the best place for me to access breaking news in a hurry. And that's part of my day-to-day -day job. But on the weekends, I delete it from my phone. Well, it's very interesting. Let's see what the future brings. But, you know, the open slather social media that all the kids are exposed to at the moment, mm -hmm. I really wonder if we'll look back at that in a couple of decades. <laughs> What did we think we were doing with them? You know, but anyway, we won't go down that rabbit hole too much. But I was pleased Kevin, right. raised, Kevin raised it. And and the little tip there is, you know, if your phone's driving you mad with all the social media, delete it like Gemma's done, and just make a time of the week where it's you're going to. You need to have a sponsor. I'm not even kidding. You almost need to have a sponsor. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm kind of taking the mickey out of myself, but it's true. It's like, you know, we know that they create alg algorithms for a dopamine hit. So, yeah, so you, you know, call a buddy. Um, Renal, just going back to the whole nu nutrition, I, I just, and I'm wondering if after I ask you about this, if anyone else has had this sort of experience in the cohort or just day to day. I had a friend once who um, was diagnosed with clinical depression. It was existential in their, uh, sorry, circumstantial in their case. Uh, they were going through a very tough time at, um, and they went to see a doctor. So I preface this by saying they went to see a clinical psych and they went to see a GP. They were actually prescribed a regimen of exercise and a particular diet. And for that person, they needed no medication. They, you know, they were super, what I'm trying to say is it wasn't just, oh, I'm just going to go stop eating chips, for example. They actually went to a doctor. The doctor prescribed this regime of exercise which i think was walking a certain amount of time a week and lightweight session can you can you anyway the, the spoiler alert they recovered um very well and have maintained that recovery can you talk to that kind of thing yeah absolutely so good on that person because they took the advice and mm. this is part of the challenge that we have in clinical practice um, because there's a growing body of evidence that says that mental health and physical health are so closely linked. And one of the strategies that we look to implement is improving or increasing physical activity. Right. But it depends on the individual and whether they are ready to set those goals and really have that as an important target for themselves. And right. that's the challenge that we have in the mental health physio space and in occupational health. Because we know what the evidence is as practitioners, but it's at the, at the hard part. And I think a grant would, would agree with me here is that it's making those changes with the individual mm -hmm. because you have the experts, but is it important enough? Are you going and, to do it? So and I, Kevin, sorry to keep going. Sorry, Priya. Yeah, he's going to say, you could come and see me or any other physio and we yeah. can talk through what the issues are. I can give you mm -hmm. the best apps a whole lot of, a lot of advice, but if you're not willing to do the hard work, it's not going to work. Mm. So and Kevin, to you, exactly about, about the, the 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 nutrition stuff on site, you know, and the food that you know that is provided, the, the all of that kind of stuff. Like I can imagine that would be a completely different ball game in 2023 than it was even five years ago. Yeah, that's correct. I mean. You know, these guys work long hours um, and usually they'll pull up at a roadside uh, roadhouse or something and just go into the hot box and grab something that's been deep fried 10 times or something. So it's not, not healthy food. <laughs> but it tastes but, so good. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's quick. You know, you can quick it and run it and eat it. And, and then they might, you know, if they go to a, you know, a, a hotel at night time and they'll pick something off a menu, you know. So not, not a lot of healthy choices. And, and it takes time to plan to be healthy. Yeah, it's easy. So true. And, and Pranala talked about the fast foods. You know, you can go down to a to a, to a, one of these fast food places, and for four four bucks, you can get a a, a meal. You know, a so called mm -hmm. meal. Whereas if you had to, and you can get it in in about five minutes, and you can eat it in another five. Well, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to do that and be healthy, you probably have to plan what you're going to buy and then prepare totally. and, and things like that. So, what we you know what we're trying to do is link the nutritional part of the food to the to the mental health. You know, I've got guys who are 40 year old who are having heart attacks and they've been doing this stuff for 20 years, you know, and it's, yeah. it just catches you. It, it, you know, yeah. we've, we've got to address this. And the other being, being a, you know, in my own self-interest, you know, it's, it's hard to, 
you know, we're in a resource restrained environment in Australia at the moment. So I, I need every one of my guys to be healthy and, and at work. Um, yeah. And, you know, and also I'm trying to make sure that we can retain these guys by looking after them rather than, you know, yeah. just going and looking for something somewhere else. We want it to be a good place where it's a holistic approach to the person. Mm -hmm. Ross, I mean, that would probably yeah, struggle. Know about you. Sorry. Gemma, I want, to work for, I want to work for Kevin. You should. He's great. I can recommend He's him. Got it. Yeah, but it really goes to it really goes to Pranola's point, doesn't it? You know, like if you if the leaders aren't singing the tune, yeah. it's really hard. But that's yeah. that sort of talk just yeah. you know, it makes a huge it's, it's part of the solution. And, and Ross, for your for your business, I mean that really resonates with certainly my, our we've worked, you know, for full disclosure, we've worked with Ross and the team at Steel Blue for a few years now, and everything that You've said it, it. It resonates with our experience of working with this business that genuinely cares about its people and wants to provide an environment where people can thrive. And thriving looks different at different times. And I remember the um, the uh, the session that my colleague Katie and I came to. I think it was last year, um, or maybe the year before. And um, the speaker was just so powerful, and there was just such a um, uh, an open environment in the room. But do you know the other thing I remember? There was healthy food. There was fruit. Yeah. There was nuts. It wasn't like, you know, I have a theory that yellow food tastes better because it's fried deep tied okay. 10 times, like Kevin said, but there's always a payback. But that yeah. day, that day at your offices um, in Perth, there was healthy food. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good thing. I, I think what I'm most proud of is when we do have someone, whether it's a group of people, whether it's a um, you know, had different end users come through, some of our distributors, that, and we, we take them through the factory, do a tour, um, and we introduce them to our staff. They always say, now this has never failed, they always say what a great environment it is. Um, and that to me is like, that's that's a big tick um, because, you know, getting back to that prevention, you know, we, we work, we try and work on, we don't disregard anything if, if our doors open. Um, if they want to have a chat about, you know, any off the field issues, um, we're we're happy to do that. And I, the other thing I, I think that, you know, that that's the business side of it. And we and we, um, you know, we, we really make sure we try and do as much as we can. Because, you know, is it, are we perfect? We I'm acting like we're perfect. We're not perfect, but we really try hard at that part. But the other thing I I, I, you know, I do personally is. Um, I have a uh, group of about six or seven guys that I catch up with every couple of months, and that's an external thing. You know, I'm not immune to all the, you know, the, the mental issues like everyone else is. You know, so um, I have this meeting, and I've got an opportunity to, you know, say things to these guys that I don't see socially in between the meetings every two months. Right. It's to me, I would advise as many people as possible to get in, even if it's just a coffee for. Uh, an hour yeah. um, every two months um, just to and it's a it's a bit of the Chatham rules thing that we all have this thing you can't mention anything outside of that meeting but it's your opportunity to actually you know say it might be about really good things that have happened in, in your life mm. but sometimes it's the uh, you know you hit a brick wall with something and you need to get some advice off uh, some other people that you don't they're not your you're not your best mates they're people that yeah. you know but they, yeah. um, you know, I've got that environment, and I, I would advise people to do that. Um, so good. Long, you have a great environment um, in, in the business, and we've got 50 people here, so it's not, you know, it's not an unbelievable amount of people. But it's, and we've got 40 people externally, who also work from home. So working from home is has its uh, downside, has its upside, it has its I downside. Hate it. and, um, I hate you know, it. All those things we that we try to bring it together. And uh, hopefully uh, we nail it, but um, you know it's, it's 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 work in progress all the time, trying to make sure that you're you're there for them, and um, you know you're you're listening to them, and you can you know, that's one thing you've got to be a great listener. You can't mm. you can't just um, you know be the one talking all the time. You can sit back, listen to what they've got to say, and see if you can give them some good advice. I think that's so powerful. And Brad, I just, because what I'm hearing here is, 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 there's actually a lot I'm hearing here to unpack, but one of the critical elements for these things, apart from leadership and having the right structures and tools and, you know, things in place, is, is the environment where someone's actually going to go, um, you know, I need help. And I think 
like I'm, I'm a I'm a pretty open person just by nature I think I'm a lot like my dad in that respect and even I've found you know in times where I felt immense pressure running the business or at certain times in the business there's a sense of if I talk about it will I be seen as a failure if I talk about it will I be seen you know somewhat diminished you know that's that's very real it doesn't matter what job you do and I think in your experience Brad and the stuff that you do that's just so critical in breaking that down like there's no there's actually great power in the authenticity of it oh yeah absolutely um you know and, and it's got to come from top down in any uh, organization you know i get one of my great uh frustrations was when an organization says we're invested in you know mental health and i go okay cool well you know what are you doing and they go oh, we have a speaker come in once a year and i'm like well you know what if we're comparing mental health to physical health, I don't know anyone that runs around the block once a year. <laughs> physical health is sorted. It's not. So if people in any organisation know from top down, and we're doing a work, uh, an interview a few years ago with Shane Elliott from ANZ, and I said mm. to him during COVID, what, how do you find the balance between, oh, no, I'm the boss, I've got, I've got you all, you're going to be okay, your family's going to be okay, versus someone coming up and going, oh, try and come have a chat. And so, you, you know, you walk, and he's the, the, the boss, the CEO, and yeah. next thing you're in the office, you're having a cup of coffee, and, and the boss leans in and says, you know all those worries you've got and you're not sleeping and all your fears and whatever? Me too. Me yeah. too. So in an instant, that, that act of kindness, you have a, a, a connection. Yeah. Now, Pranola was talking about, you know, that dopamine hit and we want to feel good. Um, I liken a phone. I look at that like a hamburger. It's a pretty funny looking hamburger. <laughs> every time you're looking at it or on it, it's like having a hamburger. So it might give you that, that hit, but in the long run, it's not good for you. And one thing that i've become really focused on and i share with everybody now is is another means to feel good and that is uh an act of kindness and so good i talk about the power of of the compliment and and grant you know yourself i love quoting martin seligman when he says the most effective way to momentarily increase someone's well-being is an act of kindness now you know, I've worked in uh, environments like newsrooms, like you, Gemma, where someone does an amazing thing, but we don't really say anything because <laughs> it's just their job. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What I yeah. said to the fellas at the barbecue last week was just have a think about someone around you that just does something for you. They might pick yeah. you up, they might shout your coffee, they may have gone over and above to help you. I do it every time I get a coffee now, and I actually love doing it. I walk up and I'll go to the barista excuse me, did you make my coffee? And of course, what happens? Everyone goes, oh, go, what? Yeah. Because as a society, we take the time to criticise, but we don't really take the time to compliment. So I walk up and I like to have a bit of fun with it. And I walk up and say, excuse me, did you make my coffee? And they go, yeah, why? And I say, unbelievable. <laughs> that, might be, that might be the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Oh, good. Now, I grabbed a coffee on my way down from seeing my psychiatrist one day. And I said it to a chap who was really busy and really flustered, and he got really emotional. And I always say to people, the one sentence, if anyone shares one sentence with me, um, I feel amazing, and that is, you've made my day. Yes, now, so good. Know how days we've got uh, on the planet, but if you can make someone's day, and going back to what we were talking about, that connection, if you're paying someone a compliment and you are helping them and you are supporting them and nurturing them, I think there's a fair chance there when, the, if they're not going so well, they're going to go, well, you know, I can talk to Frank because yeah, Frank, yeah, I trust yeah. Frank and Frank looks out for me. Yeah, that's, that's so powerful. I don't mean to get all like Oprah about it, but that is so powerful. And I know, I know that I've seen the same thing in my, like, you know, it's, I moved here. I live in Sydney now. I moved here 18 months ago. It's been really hard. It was isolating. I've got friends here, but it was still hard and isolating. And and I found myself, you know, certain days where I just had to be very kind of like self-disciplined about it. But I found myself saying to some, like, this is going to sound a little bit weird, but whatever. We're, I think we're in the place. Like I said to this lady, you've just got such a lovely smile. And she just went, what? 
I said, you have, you've just got a really nice smile. And I kept walking and I felt better. I felt better. It was weird, but it, you know, it's definitely true. And I think if we can like little things like, like yesterday on the train, there was a couple of chaps who came on and myself and another person were sitting down and we, they walked and we just both immediately stood up, gave them our seats, this bloke and me. And, um, and then we just got chatting to them and it was lovely. We, you know, had this 10 minutes of random connection on the train. And I think, you know, they might not solve the global problem in an instant, but it's layers of connection minute by minute, day by day. I think. <laughs> Back me up, yeah, Dr. Black. You don't leave me no, hanging. No, no, no. I love it. I think absolutely it's the case. And people, you know, we know from our survey, a lot of people are feeling isolated and disconnected, which is... yeah. Ironic, isn't it? Because you've got so many friends on your phone. But um, a couple of good tips I find for particularly the male patients, and that, but you know, maybe for everyone, is catching up with friends or family. Often we leave it to chance, and particularly some of the guys that are not the best social arrangers in the world, that if they are going to make a, a catch up, make it a regular, even if it falls through, but make it a bit of a default. Like, oh, let's you know, catch up every. Saturday or Ross was saying every couple of months he's got this group he catched up with. I think those regular things are really good. And, and more generally, you know, a lot of the issues that we're talking about, um, and I love Brad's idea that you can't run away around the block once, um, <laughs> but it is about habits and it is about routine and, you know, building it in. You know, if the good food's not sitting there and you're hungry, you're going to eat crap. Right. So it is about planning and it is about setting up those things. One other thing I just want to mention, I mean, people are nice, but they're also, you know, destructive and annoying. We're, we're all a bit of a mix. Right. And and, um, and I think in the workplace, it's up to the work. It's up to the bosses. Of course, they're doing their best, but they're also just human. But it is up to all the individual employees to sort of be your best self. You know, there is that moment where, you know, you can white out the boss or get caught into the bot gossip about the new guy or whatever and just be, you know, be a better person, just go, no, nah, not doing that, not in, not into that or, you know, something more extreme like bullying or whatever, calling it out saying, no, nah, no, nah, this is... That's this not is, who we are. This is not on. You know what? That's really, really, really powerful. I know I can think it just reminds me of an ex um, something that happened in my own business about 10 years ago and... Uh, just someone in the team came to me about something that had happened and said, look, it's not personal. It's just those are not our values and it really bothered me for this, this and this. And I looked at that person and said, thank you. You've just, you've just made me feel so validated as a leader and as, a, as your boss because I, I know the intent with which you're speaking to me. It's not, it's not like, rah, rah, rah. she's not dobbing. She's just like, I love working here. I love the culture of working here and that did not reflect that. And because of that, we were able to deal with it and it was not a problem. And the, the other thing I would say is our um, we have a fantastic outsourced HR um, strategist in, in my business and she took us through an exercise at the beginning of this year as a team and it was called the malfunctioning washing machine exercise. Some of you may have heard it or done it and I'm a little bit like, oh, don't make me do a trust game. Come on, let's just get on with it, get on with it. But we had to describe ourselves is if we were a washing machine. So when I'm functioning well, this is what I look like. But when I'm malfunctioning, this is what I look like. And do you know what? I have referred to that so many times in the last year. And so have my colleagues in the sense that, okay, I said to someone the other day, oh, I'm sorry, guys, I'm just, in the, I'm just in the control cycle of my malfunctioning washing machine. Like when I'm under pressure, I tend to try and do everything myself and get in the way and make mistakes. One of my colleagues said when they are feeling a certain way, they need time and space and will go off and work in a quiet room. It doesn't mean that they're being insular within the team. It's just how they cope with that. And it just actually, in a really frivolous way, opened the window on, on, how, we t on how all of us tick. Now, when you've got 100 people in a business, that's a bit trickier. But when you've got small teams, you know, like teams on a swing or teams in a particular business unit, understanding what pressure looks like to a person because what you just said Grant someone might come to the office absolutely you know a bit feral and if you don't know them or haven't taken the time to understand their pressure points you might think they're just being feral whereas that's a trigger to go hang on a second 
Gemma's, Gemma's under pressure because she's getting in my way and trying to control all my work. <laughs> that kind of thing. Simple yeah, things. Really, and I think it's so true. And if you've got that open conversation, I think the other thing is often I think a lot of the, as a GP, when I see young people come in pretty stressed out or, you know, it is where there's a big mismatch sometimes between their capacity and what they're being asked to do at work. Right. And, and that's where I reckon the bosses are super important on people having a clear sense of what is my job, what's not my job, who, ha, have I got the capacity, who do I speak to? So it's sort of the end point's mental health, but the the process is actually good governance and good management, you know, which I think is really important. Yeah, if I can just jump in there, there's there's a new code of practice on psychosocial um, well-being in the workplace, and I think it's being rolled out nationally. But that's going to put um, the spotlight on what do employers need to do to understand the risks in um, the workplace. So it's like you'll have a code of practice. How does someone work in a confined space or going working with scaffolding? So the same thing that would now apply to mental health. So we're going to see some changes in that space, which is going to be really exciting. Because um, in the physio um, arena, when you're working in a compensable scheme, so um, workers' compensation, for example, in whichever state it might be, you are expected to identify what are the mental health risks to that physical recovery. And right. this is where it becomes a challenge for mm -hmm. the physiotherapist because you're not a psychologist, mm -hmm. but you are expected to talk to those variables that are going to guide someone's recovery. Mm -hmm. So it's a really right. exciting space in healthcare to, to see this being acknowledged and to look at the person holistically. We are running down the clock here. We've got probably three to four minutes left. I just wanted to just go around the panel and ask for your parting words of wisdom, encouragement. There's lots of people watching today. We know that lots of people will watch after the effect. and We're going to encourage everybody to share widely um, to your friends and to your colleagues and your family. Um, Brad, kick us off, if you will. Okay. It relates to kindness and good feedback, like nice things. If you think it, say it. And it doesn't matter. Geez, I, there was a woman in the line at Coles one day and she had this beautiful pink outfit. Old, and I don't know, I was just in a good, I said, that might be the most beautiful outfit I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And she paused and I'm like, oh no, geez, I've bitten off more than I could chew. And she just said, you have made my day. And I Wonder. thought, bingo, bingo, pay a compliment, Wonder. the power of the compliment. Wonderful. Ross? Yeah, I think um, uh, being supportive and uh, you know, really good communication is, is important. And you know, as I mentioned before, listening and being available for your staff. Um, I think the other thing is, I just want to quickly mention that uh, it's great uh, from the business point of view to be involved with um, John Blue. It's been a, a great partnership. Um, it, it, you know, we've got a couple of others that we get involved with, but this one is a really good one. And I know that the, the staff here love uh, to be involved. And, um, you know, as a business owner, uh, I feel very proud that we're uh, you know, putting something back into the community and uh, that is such a great cause. So, um, you know, it's great to be involved today as well. So thank you, Gemma. Thanks, Ross. Pranola. Choose what you let get into your head. There's a lot of doom and gloom out there, so just be mindful of what you're allowing to filter through. It's brilliant. Small and very powerful. Kevin? Um, probably uh, value. Uh, we need to value each other, um, regardless of role or status or race or creed or whatever. There's not one person in the business that's not important. If they were, they wouldn't be in that business. So um, just value each other and look after each other and um, you know, really appreciate them as if they're part of your family because you, know, you spend at least a third of your time with them um, in a day. So um, yeah, just it. value each other. Wonderful. Dr. Grant Blaschke. Yeah, look, I've really enjoyed today and I've learned so much. My, and, and thinking about what people have been saying, I think it's a real reminder, we're human beings, you know, mm. we're not cogs in the machine. And, and that's, I think, what we've been talking about. So, like, treat each other like human beings in the, in the workplace. It makes all the difference to people's mental health. And it's great for the business as well, you know, so it's good. 
So true. Well, um, on behalf again of Steel Blue and Beyond Blue, thank you so much for joining us, panelists. You've been brilliant. I've loved the conversation. Um, to all of the people online with us today, thank you for tuning in. For those of you who might be watching later, please feel free to share. There's so much resources. There is help. You are not alone. Uh, we just want to thank you again for your involvement and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Have a brilliant weekend.